ओके वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एंड इट इज अबाउट वायरलेस एंड मोबाइल नेटवर्क्स एंड दिस इज फ्रॉम टॉप डाउन अप्रोच ओके सो इन द लास्ट क्लास इफ यू डू रिमेंबर सो वी हैड डिस्कस फिजिकल लेयर फ्रॉम द डेटा कम्युनिकेशन एंड नेटवर्किंग फोर्थ एडिशन बुक रिटन बाय फरोजन मोर स्पेसिफिकली वी डिस्कस चैप्टर नंबर थ्री एंड सम पार्ट ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फोर ओके सो इन टू डेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर सेवन इट इज अबाउट वायरलेस लिंक्स कैरेक्टरिस्टिक एंड मोर स्पेसिफिकली वी विल डिस्कस ट्रिपली एट जीरो टू पॉइंट इलेवन स्टैंडर्ड विच इज यूज फॉर वायरलेस लिंक वाई फाई सो चैप्टर नंबर सेवन बैकग्राउंड बेसिकली एज वी नो डेट द नंबर ऑफ मोबाइल यूजर्स इट इज द पीपल हु आर यूजिंग वायरलेस नेटवर्किंग सो द नंबर ऑफ वायरलेस फोन सब्सक्राइबर इट हैज एक्सीडिड द नंबर ऑफ वायर्ड फोन सब्सक्राइबर इट इज almost 5 to 1 ratio that is mean for if for if there is one wired phone subscriber then there are five mo wireless mobile subscriber so it means that there are five times more but it is more than five times or more wireless mobile phone subscriber than wired phone subscribers and it is increasing and why it is increasing the reason is that that the mobile or wireless networking it is wireless wireless means that the user don't needs wired connectivity the users they are they it so they are using wireless uh, channel and second is mobility mobility means that the user is connected to the internet while it is moving so these two features they have uh, played a uh, very important role in increasing use of wireless mobile phones okay but as you know that the cost of mobile phone is great uh, is it uh, it is costly as compared to wired phone but still the people use because due to mobility okay and the number of wireless internet connected devices it is much greater than the wired uh, wired line internet connected devices for example now there is the people have laptops internet even the people uh, one person have more than one phones and each phone there is more than two sims and each one is for example they are using the internet okay so if you if, so it means that the wireless network it has penetrated so much in our life okay so we are going to discuss that it the the wireless link characteristics okay the first thing the distance range from the transmitting node to the that received signal can be detected and and decoded this is called transmission range okay transmission range what does it mean so let's me explain it through an example then i think this statement will be clear okay suppose this is a wireless user so a wireless user it has antenna and from this antenna the sending node is transmitting wireless signal or this node is receiving the wireless signal so this transmitted uh, antenna is attached to the node okay so this is basically attached to the wifi or to the wireless uh, lan card okay so suppose this is the node it wants to transmit a signal so this antenna it will propagate a signal and since this antenna is omnidirectional so when it propagate a signal so the signal this is the signal generated so it moves toward right side it moves toward upper side it moves toward left side it moves toward down side so it moves in the sphere in the whole sphere 
so it is moving from this network devices toward right side toward left side toward up and down so it is moving in the sphere okay so when the signal is transmitted so it it has some transmission power for example its p transmission power is 10 decibel okay for example i am speaking so this sound it has some loudness okay so similarly that as signal it has power so suppose this signal is transmitted with the power pt which is called transmission power and it is suppose 10 decibel now suppose similarly they, these are the receivers so each receiver has a threshold value what does it mean so if threshold value means that if this device it receives a signal with the power 4 db or above then this a can detect and decode the signal if the signal value that is received at this node its power is or its energy is or its intensity is less than p threshold less than 4 decibel then this device cannot detect it cannot detect and cannot decode it for example these are three people a b c when they receives the signal so they may have they have a threshold value that up to how much signal value it can detect for example a person these are the person a b c so e, e they they have a their ear can hear a sound clearly up to some limit max minimum there is a minimum limit if the if the sound is received with the loudness less than the minimum threshold value then they cannot hear it so similarly a and b c they have a receiving power this power means they have a p threshold value that if these devices receives the signal above equal to p threshold or above p threshold value then these devices can de can understand that what is in the signal that is it can decode and it can detect and it code the, the signal that what is present in the signal okay so suppose this threshold value is 4 decibel okay now suppose when this signal it propagates through the medium so we have discussed that due to resistance due to interference the signal intensity the signal power it reduces suppose it is reduced here you can see that okay its energy is reduced okay now suppose that this uh, signal it is received uh, this signal that is transmitted with the power pt it is received at a b c but it is received at a with the power 7 that here the signal has power 7 7 power is remaining so it means that it was transmitted with the 10th power but it is received with the 7th power so 3 decibel is last 3 decibel is last similarly at b it is received with the power 4 decibel so its receiving power is 4 similarly at c the signal is decreased further its the signal power is decreased further and its power is now 2 so it c the signal is received with the power 2 okay since each a b c it has threshold 4 decibel it is mean that a b c can understand the signal if its power is 4 decibel or above 4 so it means that a can understand the signal because the signal value is 7 so it is greater than 4 so a can understand and decode b can also understand and decode because it's uh, the signal power receiving power it is equal to threshold of the p threshold of the p but the c it can receive the signal but it cannot detect and decode why because its receiving power is 2 the signal power is 2 but the p uh, but the c it has threshold 4 that it means that the c can detect and understand the signal if the signal value is above 4 4 or 4 above 4 but here the signal value is 2 so it cannot understand okay so what does it mean so it means that this is the the red one this is the radio range radio range means 
that this is the device if it receives a signal okay uh, with the power 4 if this signal traverses more then the power will be less than 4 so it, if it is less than 4 then no one can understand no one can understand so it means that this is the transmission power that within this circle the signal power remains 4 or greater than 4 if it remains 4 or greater than 4 then it can be detected and decoded so this defines the transmission range so transmission range is the distance from transmitting node from transmitting node that the received signal can be detected and decoded so okay so each transmitter it has a transmission range it has a transmission range okay so if you want that the signal should reach to C with greater than 4 power or less than 4 uh, greater than or equal to 4 power okay so what should we do we should either move this C toward this circle near to the transmission or we should increase the transmission power we should increase the transmission power so here the loss is how much the loss is 8 at C point the loss is 8 because the receiving power is 2 and the transmission power is 10 so how much is loss 8 so if we can increase the power by up to 14 if the power if the transmission power is 14 decibel then here the it see the receiving power will be 6 so it can be detected okay so this is the transmission range okay and these are the these are the receiving power receiving power means that the signal is received at this dis is this device and the signal power is 7 at this moment at this moment here the signal power is 4 decibel so 6 decibel is last and here the signal power is okay so how much is the power loss so power loss is equal to pt minus pr so here the pr is 7 so how much is loss 10 decibel is loss here the power of the energy or the signal it is 4 so it means that how much is loss 6 is loss okay so now we are discussing element of wireless networks okay a wireless network it consists of wireless host like laptop mobile phones or computers so wireless host these are laptop or smartphones where the user sits and we the user use the internet so it runs the application and the user use the internet through application so here okay so it may be stationary for example a desktop computer a laptop a person is sitting or it can be mobile for example a person has mobile and it is moving or a person has laptop and it is moving okay so a uh, wireless network it consists of hosts wireless host it consists of base station okay so we will discuss it so the first the component of the wireless network is wireless host okay the second is base station base station this is base station this is base station this is base station or this is the base station so base station is typically it is connected to the wire network base station is connected to the wire network through wire network it is connected to the network infrastructure and its purpose is relaying it is because it receives the signal data from the host and then it transmit the data to the destination host or to the network and such okay so it is just working as a relay as a forwarding agent so it 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 works as a relay it is responsible for sending packet between wire network and wireless host in its area for example this is a cell tower or it is are in the wireless uh, lane it is access point okay so its purpose is just it receives the data from host and then it transmit the data to the host within its area or it transmit data to the network infrastructure and from a network infrastructure it is sent to another area okay and the wireless link and the wireless link so elements of wireless network are hosts base stations 
and wireless links so the host and the wireless uh, and the base station it is also called access point they are connected through wireless link they are connected to wireless link so typically used to connect mobile station to base station but sometimes the base station can be connected to each other by wireless links but usually they are connected through the wired network so the base station can also be connected through the wireless link okay so also used as backbone link okay so the wireless like what does it mean that the wireless link can also be used as backbone link what does it mean the base station they can be connected to each other through the wireless as well but here they are connected through wire network these base station can also be connected with each other through wireless link okay so the wireless link it uses multiple access protocol to coordinate the link access we will discuss it later on okay so the wireless links they are of different data rates they are different with different frequency having different data rates and having different transmission distance it, okay so the wireless links they are different types we will discuss it suppose so the wireless technology that we are using today so they can be 802.11 ac 802.11 n 802.11 ag 802.11 b 802.15 802.11 ag point to point 4g 3g 2.5 gb and 2g okay so these are different wireless links you can see that each wireless link have different data rates for example 802.15 it can support data rate up to 1 mbps 802.11 ac it can support data rate up to 1300 mbps similarly the 4g technology it can support data rate up to 11 mbps okay so each wireless link it has its own data rates each wireless link it has its own data rates and each wireless link has transmission distance that how much should be the distance between sender and receiver so you can see that this technology they are used for indoor so they can cover the sender and receiver they should have this maximum distance from 10 to 30 meter from 10 to 30 meter and this technology they can cover outdoor from 50 meter to 200 meter from 200 meter to 4 km and even from 5 km to 20 km so you can see that the wireless links they have different data rates and they have different transmission range okay so if the transmission range is increased the transmission distance increased so the data rate is decreased the data rate is decreased okay so the next part the elements of wireless network is infrastructure mode so there are the wireless network it is of two types one is called infrastructure mode okay so what does infrastructure mode means the wireless network it can be infrastructure mode infrastructure mode means that the base station connects mobile into wire networks so there are base stations right base station base station base station base station and these base station are connected through the network infrastructures so the host they are connected to the wireless network through base stations through base stations so and if two if these two users they want to talk so they cannot talk to each other they have to talk through base stations so this is called infrastructure mode so in infrastructure mode wireless network what does it mean that there are base stations special devices access points and these access point or base station they connects the hosts together or to the network infrastructure to the wire network okay so it means that if two devices wants to communicate they cannot communicate they have to communicate through the access point if this device wants to communicate with this devices so this is attached with in one access point this is attached with another access point so this access point will transmit data to the uh, to the base station base station will send data to the wired network and it will be reached here and this access point will deliver data to this destination 
okay but you can see that one device it should be connected to one access point at a time a device cannot be connected to more than one access point okay so when a device moves from one access point to another access points so this is so the x so the device has to connect with the new access point okay for example here you can see that this device is it is here so it has it it is attached to this base station support it is moving and it is coming closer to this base station so it will de disconnect with from this access point and it will connect with this access point this is called handoff procedure when a host disk de-associate or disconnect from one from one access point and reconnects with a new access point or new base station this procedure is called handoff this is called handoff so the mobile change base station providing connection into wired networks so this is called handoff okay so there are different algorithms used to for handoff so if this base station is receiving the data from the, if this host is receiving data from this base station and this base station so it 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 can connect to both base station but the host has to connect with the one base station at a time so to which it should connect so from where this, this strong received signal is received from where the strong signal is received okay so if the strong signal is received from this base station so it will connect with this base station okay now another type of wireless network it is called ad hoc mode in ad hoc mode there is no base station okay there is no base station the nodes can only transmit to other nodes within link coverage for example this node they are in same transmission range so they can talk to each other okay directly this is called ad hoc mode but this base station cannot talk to this base station this host cannot talk to this host why because this host is transmission range to the here so it cannot reach to here it cannot reach to here so therefore they are in different transmission range so they cannot talk okay so node organize themselves into a network the nodes they organize themselves okay and they and they can so both uh, each node is uh, each host is working as a host as well as a router okay so we will discuss it later on okay so the wireless network there are different types okay and similarly the infrastructure network it can be single hop and it can be multiple hops and the best the uh, the ad hoc mode it can be also single hop or multiple hop okay let's discuss it through an example this is the infrastructure mode here you can see that here each base each host is directly connected to the base station this is called single hop this is called single hop that each base station is directly connected to the base station directly this is called single hop and this is called multiple hops here this base station this host cannot reach to base station directly so it sends the data to this host and this host then send data to this base station so this is called multiple hops this is called multiple hops okay so this is basically used in wireless mesh networking okay so the infrastructure mode it can have single hop and it can have multiple hops single hop host connects to the base station which connects to the large network so the host is directly connected to the base station this is called single hop you can see here the host are here the host are, is directly connected to the base station this is called single hop infrastructure mode okay in this infrastructure mode multiple hops host may have to relay through several wireless nodes to connect to larger internet this is called mesh network for example here this mobile this host okay for example this host it, it is not directly reachable to base station so it transmit data to this host and this host then send data to this base station so this is called multiple hops okay similarly the ad hoc network it can be single hop you can see that all the nodes they are within the range 
this is called single mode and the ad hoc network okay so they can each one can transmit to each other okay similarly the ad hoc network could be multiple hops you can see here that a has transmission range this red one up to here so a can talk to b and b can talk to a okay similarly th this is the radio range of b this is the radio range of b so a and b they are in their each other transmission range so they can talk to each other okay but c it has transmission range here this is the c transmission range which is in the green okay so it means that c and b can talk c and b can talk okay similarly d so so now a suppose a wants to send packet to d a wants to send packet to d so a transmission range is here red one so a can reach to b a can not reach to c and d okay so but a wants to send data to d so how it can send okay so a will transmit data to b so because a can reach to b so a will transmit data to b now b can reach to c okay b can reach this is the transmission range of b the dotted green uh, dotted blue lines these are this is the transmission range of b so b can reach to a and c so b will transmit to c so b can reach to c and then c can reach to d because this c has this is transmission range of c which is in the green color okay so c can transmit to d so this is called multiple hops say a is transmitting data to d so a is passing data to b b is passing through uh, to c c is passing to 3 so the a sends the data to d through passing through multiple hops through b and c so this is called multiple hops ad hoc this is called multiple hop ad hoc mode so this is the ad hoc mode multiple hops okay so we have discussed uh, the uh, the the wireless network okay the infrastructure mode can be single hop and multiple hops the no infrastructure mode that is ad hoc mode it can be single hop and multiple hops okay so no base station no connection okay so a uh, bluetooth uh, ad hoc network it is as example multiple hops no base station no connection to larger in, in, in the network may have to relate to each other a given wireless node so mainnet and mainnet is its example okay so we discuss single hop ad hoc mode and single hop multiple hops ad hoc mode okay now we are going to start wireless link characteristics this is very important okay the wireless link it is it has some unique characteristic and it is some important characteristic that are different from wired link first is decrease signal strength okay when the signal is transmitted so when signal propagates then this radio signal attenuates radio signal attenuate means that the signal power the signal energy it decreases intensity it's in, it decreases as it propagate through matter so when the radio signal passes through different medium so it has different attenuation this is called path loss or power loss similarly uh, similarly when a radio signal is transmitted when a radio signal is transmitted okay so basically you can see that the wireless network it is using ear as a medium so in ear we have different frequencies okay so these different frequencies they interfere with each other so standardized wireless network frequency is using 2.4 gigahertz it is shared by other devices by other phones so the devices and motor they interfere with each other okay so so it means that when the in the wireless network we use ear as a medium okay so when we use ear as a medium so they are in the ear there are different frequency at a time so these frequency they interfere with each other and this interference it causes certain phenomena it 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 causes noise 
it is basically distort the in the signal similarly it is we have multiple path propagation what does it mean you can see that this is the transmitter okay this is the transmitter and this is the receiver the transmitter is transmitting the signal so the signal it is moving in all direction it is moving in all direction in the sphere it is moving in this direction 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 in this direction when it moves so it reaches to the receiver now in this direction it moves it strike with the hard surface for example this is a bell so it strike here so when it strike here so the signal reflects and signal reach here so here this signal it reach from the transmitter directly okay and this signal it reach first it moves here and then it reflects and then reach okay similarly another signal it moves like in the, on this path it strike here with, with with an object and when it strike so it generates other waves this is called secondary waves generation it generate other secondary waves and these secondary waves it are signal it reach to the receiver similarly a signal it moves in this direction it strike with an object but it not reflect but it diffracts here its its angle is changed and it reach so you can see that a signal is reached through multiple paths and when they reach to the multiple path this is called interference and this is called multi path propagation it is called fading okay so this multiple path fading it doesn't occur in wired network it occurs in wireless network okay so you can see that this wireless signal it has some important differences from wired network one is called decreased signal strength so when the signal is moving through the medium its energy its power is get decreasing interference from other sources and multiple path propagation the radio signal reflects of objects ground arriving at the distance at slightly different times so all these things it makes the communication wireless communication even point to point wireless link much more difficult and it results into higher bit error rates so these phenomena it makes the wireless communication difficult it causes bit error more bit error as compared to the wired link okay so if we have more bit more chances of bit error more probability of er uh, bit error so therefore we use crc why crc is used because the crc it has the capability to detect up to all consecutive bits so it is computation extensive but it is more powerful to detect bit error and to correct bit error so therefore we use strong bit error detection scheme which is used crc and since we have also uh, we use feedback mechanism we will discuss it feedback mechanism means that when the data packet is transmitted from sender to receiver the receiver when it receives the data correctly the receiver acknowledge that the packet is received so if if the sender receives the acknowledgement then the sender comes to know that packet is received correctly otherwise it will resend the data so we have the uh, feedback mechanism the reliability in the wireless link okay and the, we will discuss it okay so we have discussed multiple path propagation this is the another phenomena which is called signal to noise ratio characteristic because we have discussed in the uh, physical layer that this is the signal and this is the noise so the signal is a uh, is of higher power and the noise is of low power so signal power and the uh, noise power its ratio is greater so it can be understand but if the signal and the noise their ratio is lower that is the signal power and the noise power they are closer to each other then the signal to noise ratio is lower so the signal cannot be understand 
so the signal to noise ratio it should be larger why it should be larger so that it is easier to extract the signal from noise for example if one person is if i am talking and the students are also talking so the students are making noise so my voice it sh it should be louder than the student voice so that then the noise okay so that the student can understand easily but there is a trade off between signal to noise and bit error okay so what does it mean let's discuss if in a given physical layer if we increase the power if we increase the transmission power so we are increasing the transmission power means if we increase the signal power so we are increasing the snr signal to noise ratio but if we increase the signal to noise ratio and we increase the power then it decreases the bit error rate it decreases the bit error rate okay so let us discuss so if we increase this higher snr lower the bit error because if we increase the snr the signal ratio so it means that the data is received more correctly it can be understandable more so it reduce the bit error so given a physical layer increase power increase snr and decrease bit error so you can see this from the figure so these are basically the modulation technique we discuss digital to digital modulation these are for analog modulation okay so you can see these are the technology used so bpsk it supports 1 mbps data rate okay and qam it basically supports uh 4 mbps and qm it basically support 8m so you can see that from this figure increasing the power needs more energy and causes interference okay so if we increase the power so it's decrease the bit error rate it decrease the bit error rate however it increase the transmission range and it causes the interference okay so we have to choose uh, uh we so that's why we have to choose the snr snr higher data rates and higher bit error rate so we have to choose snr in such a way that we have high data rate and high uh, lower bit error rate okay so you can see that if there is higher data rate then it also helps the higher bit error rate because if we increase the bit error rate uh, de decrease the bit error rate okay you can see that here this is the bpsk its data rate is 1 mbps and this is qam its data rate is 4 mbps but here the 4 mbps it has higher bit error rate it has higher bit error rate and this lower data rate it has lower bit error rate so if we increase the data rate we also increase the bit error rate so we should have a trade off there is a trade off okay so there is a trade off involved trade off involved means that we should select the snr and data rate such and bit error such, such that they are balanced okay so you can see that here at for example at uh, 10 mbps if uh, at, at 10 snr okay at 10 snr if the snr is 10 decibel here okay so the bps it has the bit error 10 minus 7 10 minus 7 but at 10 snr the qam it has the bit error 10 minus 1 so it is very large it is very large so the qam it has higher data rate it has higher data rate so it means that the higher data rate it causes more bit error more bit error okay so given snr we should choose physical layer that meet the bit error requirements given highest throughput okay so snr may change with mobility the snr can also change with mobility with the nodes moves so so we have to 
a dynamically adopt physical layer modulation technique pet okay so now we are going to discuss another important phenomena and that is called wireless link uh, hidden node problem we will discuss it through an example in the next video okay